Okay, let's do this. Ah, uh, Troyovin. Okay, Diva. Some points to keep in mind. So it's kind of hard because I, f I feel like you guys would enjoy it a lot more if they were playing like actual full brawl or if they were playing like a full dive from shock side. But we gotta, I, I gotta try to kind of show you these cool points that Troy does um, really well. So I will definitely like expand upon this uh, a little bit more. But whoop, we won't do it like that. We'll do. These are like my cliff notes on the side. So. All right. So, first things first. I'll try to kind of put this in like correct positions. Um, might not like do matrix. I might just like keep it like that. Anyways. Big part about D.Va, um, space management. And yes, I know space is on the other team, so I'm going to try my best not to use space too much. Um, but space management is one of the most important things on D.Va. Uh, this is the best way I can explain D.Va to you guys. D.Va can do everything. Like, I mean, practically everything. Like, she's almost one of the best off tanks in the game. She can eat damage, she can 1v1 people pretty easily, uh, she can help people walk up, right? She can deny uh, enemy enemy players like space based off of your position, right? So with D.Va, you need to have a very good understanding of space management and to kind of break down the points like a little bit more, that means positioning, That means zoning, right? That means protecting. That that le means like a whole crap ton of things with space management, right? So you need to understand with your space management, specifically, I'll put less on protecting and more on positioning and zoning. You need to understand when you need where you should be positioning and like that will lead to like zoning and protection and all that stuff. So positioning is a big part and it's positioning in pre-fight and mid-fight, right? That this kind of goes into. And there's a lot of things that determine where you should position yourself in terms of the space available to you. So it's very like back and forth, back and forth, right? Mid fight, all right. So what's the next thing we kind of have to talk about? Well, I think the next important thing that you kind of need to talk about is your decision making. Um, and you can tell there, like I put aggro versus passive. Um, so on off tank, I feel like this is the main thing that makes or breaks off tanks a lot of the time, not specifically on D.Va, but just in general, is your decision making is very important on off tank. You always have the option to go aggressive, especially on D.Va, you have the ability to play a very, whatever kind of style you want to play. I think about like D.Va's in my head, for example, uh, Void and Hanbin are examples of this right now. Hanbin, in my opinion, is a very aggressive D.Va, like he looks for aggressive decision making a lot of the time. Fury is also a story. Uh, I look at people that are a little bit more of an enabling off tank, Space of Minds, um, Void comes, those off tanks come to mind in terms of being able to enable your team to do things. And this is where it gets like really important where you kind of have to, in my opinion, find a balance. And it's not always about making aggro plays or making them more, um, but I'll put it like this. Instead of passive, I'll put aggro versus enable. It's about enabling your team in my eyes. Instead of aggro, uh, I'll keep aggro instead of solo. But this comes down to like, again, the stuff that I was before. So like, for example, uh, zoning team or like zoning the enemy team, right? Like zoning specific characters. This comes down to like protecting some characters on your side, right? That goes down to 1v1s or like dueling kind of thing, right? There's a lot of d different decisions you can make, but these I think are some of the more bigger ones that you can kind of do. Um, 
which goes into the next view, right? Like these are a little bit more, these kind of go down to decision making and stuff, but I like to kind of talk about these more, more in detail specifically. Uh, cooldown wise, like for rockets compared to matrix, I think matrix is the one that is you overused uh, or underused. And the big thing with matrix is it's all about, uh, have to use my matrix now do i do i need to use my matrix because i'm in a situation where i really really desperately need to or i can get around using my matrix so often uh sometimes you're at the mercy of your team right where it's uh like i don't have to like i have to matrix them based off of what they're doing but this is why it's really important that as diva you kind of especially like backline for example right like if it was me in shock here and it was like me guys potentially i would be taking control of like hey like walk up with me hey like we walk this excuse me, hey, we do this. Uh, and that's just because you need to, as D.Va, utilizing your matrix is a big, big part of your kit, right? That's what makes you picked off tanked in the game, is your matrix. It's not just the fact that you can do a lot of different things, but hey, like, can I can I actually use this in an effective way to enable, maybe just eat damage so I can go aggressive, right? Again, that aggressive versus enabler mindset, but it's always going back to this question of, do I have to use I need to actually utilize this matrix or can I kind of get away with it? The last thing, which is bomb, which is what I think is another thing that is not utilized in its best efficiency, right? We look at bomb. Uh, a lot of times people utilize bombs for kills or we hear people say, yeah, like you, you, you're you zoning really well with the bomb. Um, and this is where I think it's really important. And this is where Choi does it really well. You got to look at bomb as two different. Instead of doing that, I'll do it like this. You can use bomb as a second life. me kills will come from this but you're utilizing bomb as a way to um like this create chaos so what do i mean by creating chaos well bomb is meant in a way to kind of split up So we talked about like using bomb lies because you force them to kind of back up. You use kind of as they go for an engagement, you use a bomb so that they all have to split in different directions or they all have to go forward together, which puts them by. Overall, the whole point of bomb is to create chaos so that you can kind of take control or you can kind of go into a chaos versus chaos situation. What I mean by chaos is the way we go through team fights, right? Um, and I haven't talked about this concept on stream yet, more kind of detailed orientation, but there's team styles that are more chaotic and styles that are more organized. Uh, and there's a mixture between chaos and organized play. The thing that you need to understand is with chaos, making it so that whatever plan was on the table or go, you just go in and you just don't even have a plan. You just individual skill at that point or you rely on potentially like players or splitting up, right? Divide and conquer. And that's the big thing to understand. Chaos is just about forcing individual duels and forcing the teams to play less as a team and more so like a giant like one-on-ones or like a giant thing where the, you can't be very, it's like it goes by this, this, and this. Um, it's up from like splitting them up or like forcing the engagement not to be as strong as before. And I think that's how you need to utilize bomb in a way is you need chaos with your bomb. And a lot of that will be based off whoop. Um, corners is about how I'd put it. Slash engagements. I'll write that in white so that it's all kind of together. Obviously, with that being said, uh, these are points that I kind of have. Uh, corners slash engage whoop i'll erase this stuff now i wish this eraser was like bigger and i could like just do one swoop and they would all be eh, whatever 
So these are like the four main points that I kind of would utilize for a diva. Is there more? Yeah, like I haven't even talked about micro missiles. I haven't even talked usage yet. Um, what would I say for that? It kind of goes down to matrix. Like, do I have for micro missiles? It's more so like u utilizing them for a purpose. Uh, it's the same thing for shift. Um, utilizing it for a purpose. That's the big things that seem to get. I won't focus mainly on that. But if I notice points where I feel like Choi did a shift, for he's utilizing his shift in a proper position, or he's doing a good job of kind of consisting his shift uh, instead of holding it or vice versa like his ro rocket job of like utilizing them in a good situation or there's a reason why he's utilizing it and it's a very good kind of situation i'll talk about it a bit more but this is what we're going to talk about and the the big big things that we're going to talk about is the space management and decision making right um those in my opinion are the most important things to kind of look at all right Okay, here, let's see. So first things first. Troy understands that they have a Sombra on their team, on the enemy team of Glads. So he knows the first thing he has to check, spy check, spy check. Look for this Sombra and try to force her out. He doesn't want to allow the Sombra onto his team or be able to get a good hack onto anyone here, right? Again, short burst of matrix as they're walking up. He's relying a lot more on Rhine Shields, right? But he's he has utilized mainly just to eat a little bit of spam. He's never using it for a long duration of time. It's just a strix, and then you kind of go. And this is why it's really important. You see, right? Like he's utilizing the matrix just for a small second, so they door, and then he's just they're walking up, right? This is where space management, and this is where specifically. Uh, making comes into effect here in this specific fight so we see that the team is walking up here on this high ground watch how Choi play this fight out All right back up here again and I'm gonna show you what I specifically mean and I'll slow it down a little bit here this is why I think Choi is one of the best divas in the game right now. And like, this is just one decision out of decisions that he does a lot. See how he doesn't follow the team here? Yes, he's using a lot of Why is he using a lot of his Matrix? See how Zen is like falling down to Kefster and set high ground? Part of it is, sure, yes. He he doesn't want to be here. But the main reason why he's dropping towards Kefster is he knows if he stays here, Choi's going to fly on him. And Choi's gonna try to kill him. And that's what's beautiful. Like, Sh Shu drops as well to kind of bait him into the sack by. But this is why, again, like, Choi is very a very good off tank. And most off tanks would follow the team into that brawl. It's that he can look to utilize a possible aggressive decision making, right? For a play here, try to kill Shu or potentially force him out, right? And this is where it comes down to, like, understanding space. So he understands he shouldn't have space as his team, he should act as a threat as well. And again, he goes into his team, the safety of his team here. They're able to live. And then as we walk here, right? Troy. Troy walks up. He just forces out Bird Ring. From here, he's just going to kind of like play around. Look to see where Sombra potentially is. Right? Always playing across from his Rhine too. I would say directly behind his Rhine. But he's always trying to play like a, a bit of a crossfire with the Rhine there. Which is very good. He doesn't want to play directly behind the Rhine all the time because he, he's a threat, right? He wants to be cleared. You see this with the main, I say like, why do I have to use Matrix? A lot of these situations in these fights, you're seeing he's not really using Matrix for his team aside from a rotation. He's using it for himself. And it's mainly to hold space or to potentially pressure a little bit more, right? Do I think that's useful? Yeah, I do. If you're in the terrain, it's good for you to utilize your Matrix so you can hold a, a little bit more of an aggressive spot. As long, and that's if, as long as your team is holding aggressive space with you, right? All right. Seems to be skipping words a little bit. A little buffering. Ah, uh, wonder why that. 
Hmm. See if I have anything going on in the background. It says my bit rate's fine. So now let's look at Streamlabs and see if there's anything like it's kind of. Sh uh, seems it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong. Am I am I still buffering or whatever? I don't think I am anymore, but I could be. Not sure. But just double check. Like if I am, like just let me know. But I don't. I am. Um. You could always check the stream. Like turn it on on my side. Better test one two three one two three. Uh. uh, uh. Okay, it might be me. Sorry for that. You're cool, man. No worries. No worries. Um. All right. Where was I? Oh yes. So whatever. This is still a pretty decent pause point. Matrix usage, right? He's using it a lot for himself, and that's because he's trying to act as a very aggressive threat on the front line, which is very good. In terms of his space management, his positioning, right? We're noticing in this pre-fight. He's always consistently putting himself in a position where he's matrixing majority of his team on rotations and crosses, which is very good. Uh, Mid-fight, it's more so about utilizing the matrix more for himself, so he can hold space for a longer period of time and he can look to become a potential threat, and that goes into his decision making. When is he enabling and when is he going aggressive? He's enabling when his team is trying to take space, but when his team is going aggressive, that's when he's looking to go aggressive. But he's looking to go aggressive by zoning or potentially looking for a fight or a duel, right? Not a lot of protecting going around. Just make sure to in case for YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I will. No worries, no worries. Alright. Again, he's playing he's playing in a position to enable his backline. Right off the shifts, he's utilizing his cooldowns to look to burst. This is where it gets like a little bit rough here, right? Look at Choi Bin's POV, he's shooting, everything like this, right? Potentially looks to protect his backline. This is where it gets a little bit bad, right? He utilizes almost half his matrix to potentially protect his backline because he was assuming his backline would go for a rotation. But he's utilizing a lot of his matrix when he does not need to utilize a lot of his matrix here, right? Lamp comes down, it looks like a little bit of poor communication there from all the shots. Did he utilize his matrix properly? No, I don't think he did. He wasn't utilizing when they were trying to move, he wasn't utilizing to try to reduce damage in a duel. Everyone was still relatively safe from the shock when he was looking to utilize this matrix. So it's a big thing to keep in mind that with the matrix usage, again, you ask, do I have to do it? Do I really need to? Nero had Violet with him. Violet and Nero as well when they're trying to go for the cross, they had to force the lamp, right? This is where it gets important to min max and be able to communicate like if you need to use specific cooldowns for what um, or if you are going for rotations or not right Troy was doing that matrix because he thought they were going to go for the rotation so again a little bit poor there like I said aside from this like he could have potentially kept people alive here by utilizing a matrix but you got to keep in mind this is also a Zarya right you can't you can't eat the beam damage lamp would have been more important there than really anything All right, perfect. So big thing to look at here is they kill Muse and this grab goes down, right? And as this is happening, you see that he's trying his best to kind of pressure and protect, right? But this is where it's important. He shifts in, he's shifting out because he knows that he can't really actually deal with those threats. After Ryan goes down, you're gonna notice Troy is just gonna pl play this pillar. But he's going to stay at this front line because he knows his his decision making, right? Once the Rhine is dead, he is the new main tank. He is the new person that has to take pressure and aggro. So that's a big thing that he has to keep into mind here is to keep that sort of presence and to keep that aggression right on him. So he's always putting himself in a position where he's the first to take any sort of damage from anyone here. So this is good decision making from him to understand he needs to take that role. In terms of his space management, he understands he has to play a more forward position compared to playing an off angle or playing a little bit more for damage, right? Alright, Troy goes for, try to goes for a boop here. He's unable to. This is when Glads are able to catch shock. 
quite off guard with an EMP. Go for the EMP and clean up a little bit of kills here. Again, Choi is kind of playing in a position where he's trying to understand or approach what space he should play based off of who's alive on his team, but not just who's alive on his team, but who's alive from Glad's team as well. What are the numbers? Who, Which heroes are alive? And this is why it's very important, like I said, for off tank specifically, right? Looking at this stuff, this is why decision making is such an important thing with regard to both of these key points here, right? Decision making and understanding the info in front of you and what to do with that information is incredibly important because you have to understand what's going on around you pretty much, right? So again, we see that he's utilizing specifically that matrix to try to enable them to rotate. They're unable to fully rotate, so they have to utilize the lamp, right, for potential protection against the dive. We're seeing that Choi is looking to constantly, constantly go in to potentially catch anyone off guard if he sees a squishy too far forward. But whenever he's not in danger, he has the shift. He's always going back. He's never fully committing his shift forward, right? And he's never ending his shift. He's always utilizing majority of his shift and ending back with his team if he feels he's not safe, right? If he is safe, he will play that positioning. Or that aggressive position, I should say, sorry. So again, you see he's off angling from his team. Now, based off of the shatter that was hit, he tries to go a little bit aggro, see if he can potentially kill Muse or kind of get a boop. He's unable to do both. His team backs out, he backs out, right? Again, he's utilizing the shift. He didn't use the full duration of the shift, but he utilized it as much of the shift as he could, go forward and then go back, right? And it's good that he's not utilizing the full duration sometimes if he doesn't need to. He's canceling it whenever it requires him to, which is very good, right? Because this shift is a short cooldown, so you should be abusing the shift as much as you can, but not utilizing the full duration unless you really need to. Here is a situation when he's being defensive, right? He sees his team is mainly just playing for the payload, so what does he do instead? He looks to play to protect his backline here. He's consistently looking to see where the DPS threats are. He sees that the D3 or the DPS threats, sorry, are looking to go very aggressive on the backline, so he's looking to play in a position so he can matrix and potentially boot people away. Matrix, boot people away, come back to his team. Now he's looking to kind of act like a bodyguard. You see that he's playing very aggressive onto clearing out Muse, right? And he's just playing always in a position to matrix his backline if he requires, right? If they are taking too much damage, if they're trying to rotate somewhere. But he's always, always doing a fantastic job with the shift. Utilizing it consistently all the time to move around the map. But also utilizing the shift in a consistent way to where he can boot people away. Or he can look to kind of go for kills, right? Most of the time, as you can tell, he's looking to utilize it for displacement. And again, he's not utilizing the full shift. He's only using some of it. There's an example of him ending the shift there instead of going for the boop. He goes for the kill kind of presence and he knows it's safe to based off of the number of advantage that he has and the players around him or his team around him, right? And again, he's playing in a position towards there. Instead of looking forward, he knows that Shu is behind him. He knows that potentially somebody else is behind him. So he looks to play behind to pick up any sort of aggro that comes that way first and then potentially either look to fight them or he looks to kind of play more towards his team and force them to have to clear him out before they can walk forward. So Troy always playing in a position to where he is forced to be cleared on an angle. So very good from Troy. Again, this space, this is why I said Troy is very good with this space. When he has an advantage with space or in a fight, he's consistently putting himself in a position where he has to be cleared a lot of the times. And most teams do not clear him properly. So here, Troy has bomb. I'm very curious to see how Troy will do bomb. Why is Troy playing back here? He does not want to get hit by the EMP. So he first starts by shooting, right? To see if he can get the Sombra here, right? He's seeing if he can grab the Sombra's location before she goes in. He moves forward a little bit based off of where his team is. His team's in this room. He's on this right-hand side. He determines that he does not need to play that far back anymore because the Sombra will have to choose. Will the Sombra go for him or will the Sombra go for his team first? Even if he does for some reason get hacked, his team is still very, very close compared to the Sombra. Sombra would have to translocate in to catch up to uh, his team or his core. Um, so this is pretty good from Troy. I don't really know about this shift. Now he tries to kind of go back and regroup with his team. He's going to play towards his backline, I would presume. I guess it's not terrible. 
to play in there and use Ryan as bait on cart because you can look to play in a very safe position here. They can't, they don't really want to play in here if you're glads, right? If you're glads, going into a room like this is kind of suicide against a Torb, a Kree, like a Ryan. All of these characters make it very, very hard to kill in a close area because they get so much cleave damage and so much in like tight damage, right? Remember, dive gets value in open areas more often than not, just because of how easily you can take angles, right? Dive or brawl, like a brawl-oriented kind of comp, gets more value in an enclosed area because of the amount of damage that they can pump out in such a tight area based off of cleave, based off of setting up for uh, this burst damage that you have a lot of the time too, right? So I assume that's why he kind of went into this room. And from here, he's going to look to push out. He looks to instantly look to dual muse. He knows that his front line or his core is safe. So based off of like the distance again, you see the distance between the enemy team versus his team. Very different, right? Great cancel on the hack there as well from Troy. But he did a great job clearing muse there and then going to play with his team. Curious to see again, if we're gonna see a bomb kind of play. We do actually, ooh. So remember what I talked about with bomb, like the times when you want to go for bomb is when they maybe go for an engagement or when they're going around a corner. Cause then that causes them to have to choose. Do they want to go aggressive and go full pass? Do they want to, do they want to back up as a team, right? When they're engaging, it's kind of hard because then half of them will engage, half of them won't. The whole premise again is to create chaos, to make it so that they don't have a choice. They're kind of all splitting up and they're not in sync with the decision that all six of them are making at the same time. So here, Right when Muse goes for a slam, he goes for the bomb. Let's see what ends up happening here. Bomb is landing in a position to where it's practically right where the backline would likely look to hold here, right? We see that Shu is stuck in this little room. We see that Skewed is forced to play back towards this his like main where the point could capture. And Bird Ring and Space are playing in this space. Why is Space playing over here? Well, Space has personal bubble, so he's not really scared. He used the friendly bubble to allow Muse to go for that aggressive play and slam so he doesn't have a friendly to keep maybe a support here to take out a little bit more damage so does this bomb in my opinion feel successful yeah it does because it's completely split up glads here right they're in like four five different locations which is really good that's what you want to shock especially based off the comp you're playing what Troy is for I don't want that okay so again, he doesn't get the kills, but the huge part about this is he's forced them back. Space goes for this grab, but look how many people can follow up on this grab, right? Not a lot of people could actually follow up on the, the grab. Wino comes out as well, and they're able to get a kill onto Muse. This is again going to the point of Glads are so split in these fights, right? Troy is able to pick off uh, Shu from that as well, just based off of Shu's positioning. A very good bomb from Choi. Even though it wasn't quote-unquote full chaos, where everyone's going all over the place running around, it was so chaotic, the fight, in terms of glass, compared to an organized sort of dive. Structured dive. And again, Choi is doing a good job of just, now at this point, he understands that his team just has to play the cart. He's just looking to burst whatever goes on cart fast. And that's kind of it. Uh, yeah. Hey, Popcat. Good to see you as well. Hopefully you're having a good day. Thanks for coming to the stream. Alright, I believe you play same comp for your shock, right? Except you play Arisa? Don't remember fully. No, same comp, just with the Ryan. Alright. Okay, so again, as we kind of like are waiting for things to start, big thing to keep in mind, space management, pre-fight, mid-fight, we're seeing a lot of the times, right? I'll pause for a quick second. We're seeing a lot, a lot of the times for pre-fight, he's always in a position to looking at decision-making enable, right? He's always there to enable his team on rotation. He's there to enable his team to play aggressive, right? Enable his backline to walk up. In the mid fight, he's always looking for those aggressive kind of plays, right? And if you're noticing a lot of the time with the aggression, he's always looking for opportunity to zone, right? Less protect, more zone. A lot of time he is not protecting his backline. He is zoning somebody off, right? 
It's playing a very aggressive angle to force someone to potentially go into a duel. Yeah. Enabling for the pre-fight, he's mainly protecting, right? He's utilizing his matrix to help them rotate. He's potentially looking to duel, but he's dueling so that they can't engage very easily onto his team, right? He's holding that space properly. So he's doing a good job. We saw a bomb there. Again, he didn't play for a second kind of life sort of thing, but he played to create chaos and it worked out very well in their favor there. As for Matrix, again, do I have to use? Yeah, a lot of the times he does have to use it. Does it mean all the time for his team? No, I'd say about 40% of the time he's using it for his team. The other 60% of the time, he's utilizing it to be in a good position for himself, an aggressive position for himself, right? Again, incredibly, incredibly good job so far from Choi in terms of how he's looking to utilize his space and not just how he's looking to utilize his space, but also how he's utilizing his decision making, right? Or his decision making, sorry, my apologies. All right. So now they, they see that they're playing against Dive still here. Troy is playing away from his team. Why? He doesn't feel like he needs to play with his team because his team is controlling or able to control space on their own. They don't have to take space from Glad, so that's why he's not playing with them. That's why he doesn't have the Matrix on them. He's playing this off angle start so he can pressure it and make it harder for dives to happen or for Glad's to take space on this right hand side. So the positioning is really good. The thought process is really good. He's not utilizing the Matrix for his team because he doesn't need to right now because they control a lot of space, right? He shifts towards his team to Matrix mainly only for that specific reason because Muse is going for an engagement. As they go backward, you see he's playing in a position so he can body block his supports as they would kind of walk forward or walk backwards, sorry. Super is kind of on his own. That's kind of the scary part here. I have too many people kind of playing far back. Do I think he needs to clear Kefster out here? I don't think he's the one that should be clearing out Kefster. I think Violet and Nero should be the ones clearing out Kefster maybe here. Um... But again, his thought process is in the right spot. He's looking to clear out these flankers um, so that the rest of his team can play aggressive without worry or care in the world. So this is very good from them here. So now we see that Choi, he's looking to play more on the high ground here, help his supports if they get dove, but also to be in a way where he can go to Nero if Nero needs help, or he can drop to super and play point if super needs it. Here he drops on the point to assist super here. Shifts towards... Tracer, Forcer out, ends on the high ground, ends in a safe position. Again, you're noticing with these shifts, he's not using the full duration, number one. And number two, he's always ending his shift in a safe position, right? It's never in a position where it's very dangerous. All right. He's unable to save Twilight here, but let's see how he looks to play after Bird Ring goes down. He's looking to pressure a little bit on this high ground. He goes back to his team. He has about half matrix, right? Retakes high. He's playing by his Ryan just in case his Ryan needs assistance. And now it's not even just assistance here. Now it's about juggling point. Ryan has no shield. He knows as Troy that he needs to play the point and delay the point so that Glance can't even get a tick here. He utilizes a lot of his matrix. He gets some healing. Again, they're he's going back and forth with the point with Super. This is fantastic juggling from him and uh, Super right now. Juggle the point really well. They have a little bit of matrix. He puts in himself in a position so he can matrix his backline. And now he's controlling this high ground again still so that he can pressure anyone away from this high ground or he can look for an aggressive play himself, right? Ooh, that lamp. Very good lamp there from Twilight as well. And my man is like so low. He's playing on the edge. Now he for goes to force out Muse because the rest of Glads are kind of all the way in the backline. He's not going to kill Muse. I would have liked to see the micro missiles get committed there from Choi so he could burst Muse, but they do not. And now it's goes back to this positioning, right? You see that his team is playing on the right. He forced out Muse. They forced the Trank so that Muse can stay alive. Now he's going towards point on this left-hand side to try to zone out Skewed and Bird Ring. They have to clear him out on the left side. He's playing this pillar to try to kind of reduce his hitbox, if not just the slightest. And they have to deal with his team on the right as well as him on the left. They force them back. Now Troy is going to defensive mode and he's looking to see 
who's the threats that are looking to threat his back line because there's nothing he can go aggressive on, right? He sees a lot of supports here. So he's playing in a position instead of peeling for the ball here, he's looking to play in a spot to where he can zone this back line to force them to have to deal with him. So the rest of his team has less pressure on them. So he's forcing two people to look at him at this point. She went all the way around just so that he wouldn't have to run into Troy, right? Does he do a successful job here? I think he does do a successful job. The amount of ultimates, even if Glads win this fight, right? The amount of ultimates that Glads had to commit just to win the fight is incredible, right? Even though Shock did commit a lot of ults themselves, again, you're on defense. On this comp, you're trying to delay and get as much time as possible, right? You're not really trying to do much. So again, a great kind of choice and showing of like zoning and being able to kind of hold space properly, utilizing that matrix in a very defensive way to enable his supports or his backline to play a little bit more aggressive, not be scared of that dive. And like I said, he did his job, even though he, they weren't able to cleanly clean up that fight. And at the same time, they weren't able to, you know, you know Troy got demeked at that point. Look at the alts down again from Glads. Glads used every single alt. And the only reason that they have pulse and they're close to a trank again is Shu was able to farm that much in the fight, right? We look at Shock. Again, Shock did use quite a few of their own alts. But you're on defense. This is a big thing for defenses. It doesn't matter all the time if you don't have ulti ultimate econ advantage going into every single fight. What matters is you have the positional advantage. Even if it's even alts or they're up a, a little bit more of an alt than another, doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to win the fight. You still have to clear the space that Shock control. From here, like before they're even able to potentially get another another clean fight with a mech, Shock, Shock go down to double pulse bomb. So it's unfortunate that Choi wasn't in mech in time to be able to eat that. Um, I don't think he should have played a little bit more aggressive to try to get that mech, because if they did, then he was potentially in a position where he would go down really, really fast. All right, Max up, tries to kind of play with the team a little bit here. Now let's kind of see what he looks to do. All right. He's looking to kind of play this corner. He's playing a little bit more with his Orisa on his team. He doesn't really want to off angle as much now because Orisa doesn't have a lot of shield compared to before. He will look to off angle more when the team is playing a little bit, when the team has an advantage, I guess is the best way to put it. He goes off to shift to try to force off bird ring and potentially space again. He shifts away last second. He uses the full duration of shift this time, but he goes back to the safety of his team, right? Ooh, lamp used early. Let's see how Troy kind of looks to move around the map here. He looks to potentially go off that pole and look to burst somebody down. What ends up happening is he's unable to kind of do anything, so he backs up because the pole does not connect. So he matrixes at first. They have rally. He knows that his team should be relatively safe with the rally going on, even though they don't have the burst heals from Twilight, he wants to just play really aggressive here. He understands that they need to make a play because they're down one. The Torbulk is getting a lot of value. You see him heading completely behind just to try to get a nice kind of pincer between them. So this is a good decision from Troy again. Why do I like this more than enabling his team? His team doesn't need his assistance right now, right? You look at everyone, right? They're receiving a rally. Uh, they're in a position that's relatively safe, right? They they have Torbolt in front of them on to the side of them too. So if Glad try to commit here, they will end up taking a lot, a lot of damage, right? And they'll have to try to break the sustain of Rally. So Troy going for an aggressive off angle here behind them is really smart actually. Because he's trying to get m as much value as he possibly can. He's using the shift to close the distance as well. He's going to have shift back up soon too. Is it going to end up working out? It's not going to end up working out because they do have the trance to kind of push aggressively past this Torvald. But overall, the idea there from Troy was very, very smart in terms of the type of play and the, the type of positioning he was looking to kind of take in that fight. Would it have potentially turned the fight? I think it would have potentially turned the fight for sure. Uh, it's just, again, they had such a good alt of Transcendence online. And they didn't have a lamp to keep them alive and that burst healing to keep them alive in that fight for Shock. Alright, we see a full switch from Shock here. So how should things kind of go? Troy should probably play a little bit more with Super in his backline to enable them. And allow Glister and Nero to play more of the off angles now. So let's see what ends up happening. We, we see him with the backline here. 
Okay, he waits to get full armor before he walks out. This is good. He shifts so that he can touch the point here. Again, he's shifting to a safe position. This is very good from Choi. Choi's in a safe position now. He's utilizing terrain, right? And again, if we look at this, I want to point this out again. If we look at this based off of here, he's a little bit more ahead of super, right? Why is this important? This goes back to the point I talked about where it's like zoning and clearing him out, right? He's playing in this position on the right-hand side because he's able to kind of reduce his hitbox the enemy team has to swing in to him in order to clear him out. And by doing that, again, it comes down to this point that if they try to run into the his team in main or try to run into super, they have a diva in their backline that could potentially kill somebody if she has micro missiles up. So there is that potential that Troy could go for aggressive plays or get value with an aggressive play here. So this is a very good decision making, again, from Troy. He's playing in a great kind of position for himself. And this is all off of how he's utilizing his shift. Very good shift usage here. Mm. Looks to potentially get any boops up top that he can. He shifts a little bit again back to the safety of his team. Do I think like he should have potentially gone for that shift up top? I don't think he should have. I think he should have just stayed in the position he was because he was in such a power position. Uh, that he didn't really even need to do anything. If he just stayed in there, he would have gotten a little bit more healing, maybe a bomb. Once he got the bomb, that's when I would say go for an aggressive action. Because then you have that bomb for second life. Regardless, Shocker able to win the fight. Even with Troy going for, I think, a little bit of a troll move there with his uh, shift. But, again. Now Shock have a lot of ults. You know, he has a bomb, again, online. Let's kind of see how this kind of goes. Glads look to potentially go for an engagement with the bongo there. Ray, when he hears the bongo goes down and the shield goes down, Troy goes for a bomb aggressively, instantaneously. Does that create chaos? Does that split them up? It splits them up a little bit, not fully. We'll double check where the bomb positioning is to see if it does split them up a little bit. Bomb positioning is pretty good to where it splits them up. You see two people go to the right, two people go to the left, and then the Arissa is going forward, right? So this is a pretty good bomb in terms of splitting. Is it good for chaos? A little bit, not really, because it's not, they're not fighting right now, right? Or they're not able to really force a fight. It's more so a good bomb to stop this engagement here from Glads. So do I think this bomb is still good? I still think this bomb is good um, in terms of creating chaos. Because it negated them from going for their original engagement, right? So it completely shut down a gladiator push here. And now they have to push in with a bomb or something else. They utilize Dragon as they try to go through a choke. It gets eaten by space. Alright, let's see how Troy will play this. Troy is starting right now with Super. He's looking to intercept them as they walk towards the stairs. I would expect him to go a little bit more to this right-hand side or the left-hand side. And end his shift off on the high ground here. Oh, well, instead he's just walking up and just fully destroying Muse. He didn't even need to shift. Now he's going to look to shift to try to boop Muse off. He's not able to and he goes back again to the safety of his team with this shift. He ends there. Uh, I'll say what I was going to say after this fight, but again, from here, actually, I'll, I'll do it now because I think this is good. Remember how I said, like, sp like Troy is, like, really good at identifying the space he can kind of take and he can kind of play around? This is what I mean by Troy is really good at this. Like, look at this. Watch. If I if this was another D.Va, the other D.Va would probably be shifting. Wouldn't even be walking. It's either the D.Va would have been shifting and then, like, shifting back and ending in the team like Troy does. Or the diva would have stayed right on top of the Arisa here. This is what wows me. Is like most people would be scared because they know if I go into an overhead, Glass has full control of this high ground. Look how many people are here, right? You have Shu, you have Bird Ring, you have Muse, right? You have Skewed. Um, Space is dealing with Nero in the back, right? You have Kepster kind of pressuring Cart, so he's doing his thing. Most divas would be petrified to take space here and try to get the value that Troy was getting here. Troy has no fear because he has a little bit of matrix. Like, it's kind of hard, but he has like full matrix. This is why he's not scared. So he walks up to an area where he can reduce his hitbox a little bit and he's just shooting Muse in the back. And right when he sees that the enemy team is kind of wide peeking here, Shu's wide peeking, but then he sees that the rest of the team could potentially shoot him from the middle there. He That's when he utilizes his matrix and that's when he goes to kind of shift to go for an aggressive shift play, and then he goes back, right? 
This is why I said like Choi is so good at this space manipulation and management because he understands when he can go aggressive and when he can't go aggressive. From here, like his positioning is a little bit rough, I would say. Um, he goes to shift onto the diva to help kind of peel her and finish her off. But the reason I said his positioning is kind of rough is because he was in this corner here. It's kind of hard to do anything in that corner. But he still is able to do enough. And he's playing in a position where he can take a little bit less damage. But overall, the team is so low at this point that it's really hard for them to kind of secure that. Do I think that super should have been in an area that even with a shield to kind of take so much damage? Probably not. Probably did not help. But again, how Choi played that fight, he played the fight the best he could. And he, again, utilized so much of that terrain to his advantage. And something I'll add to the list there that I'm kind of going on and on and on about, and I guess I forgot how important shift usage is, is he's utilizing his shift so well with mobility in terms of how to be aggressive going back to his team not using the full duration um he's doing so so well with it to put him in these key positions and i think it's super important that people understand that and highlight that in their play moving forward as well he tries to go and eat the dragon here as they go aggressive he's unable to eat the dragon he goes up in the air so he doesn't get caught in the dragon now it's all about okay now i'm gonna look to play aggressive based off of this window Goes aggressive, tries to get some kills with that boop, doesn't succeed, goes to a position that's relatively safe in the doorway, reduces his hitbox bit, he duels the tracer on the side with Nero. Now again, you're, you're seeing him put a crossfire here, and as Glads go to this corner, this is back to what I talked about, Glads look to take this corner control, they have the shield out the corner. This is when Troy goes up and he goes for the bomb. And watch what happens as this bomb goes down, right? I'll, I'll slow this down to 0.5. Look at all of Glads here. These guys are forced forward, and Shu gets pulled back so much that Shu is forced to half to Transcendence. Both Baptiste, I believe potentially Tracer, had to back up back to the main. Bird Ring had to hide on that left-hand side. Again, they're completely split up. This is a fantastic bomb from Troy, understanding right when they're going for the aggression or when they're going for that corner control, he goes right for the bomb and he splits them up beautifully to where when Shock wants to engage, they're going to get a lot from this engagement, whether it's a, a key ultimate or key kills, right? And you see Muse completely split off. Violet goes down. Glister is able to catch out space here. But Shock have put Glads in a little bit of a weird position. It's just unfortunate that, that Violet ended up going down so fast there. I think after this fight, I'll kind of talk about some stuff, but I kind of want to see why Violet actually went down there as well. Like, what caused him to die? Was it just good shots onto him or what? But Again, like, the decision was really, really good there. They forced out some key stuff, because now you look at this last fight, right? They have Trank. The enemy team doesn't have Trank. They're going to have a Bongo here as well. Good use of micro missiles to kind of look to break a shield here. Troy immediately goes away when he knows he has low matrix. He's going to hug the wall. Super's hugging the wall as well. Do I think that this trank was needed? No, if they're hugging a wall, there's no need for this matrix because the window does not go past the wall. Troy's consistently checking that right hand side as well to see if he can go for an aggressive play, right? Right when his window or the bongo goes out, sorry, he looks to potentially go for an aggressive play. Right when he sees a lot of aggro potentially goes onto him, he backs up back to his team and now his team kind of cleans up, right? How do I know that a lot of aggro goes onto him? Well, it's very simple. Watch this, ready? Oop, that's their spawn. We're going to go this way instead. Well, look at the arrows when they walk forward, right? When he looks, I believe he's looking to pressure um, Shu here. I believe. It's either Shu or Bird Ring. But watch this, ready? Okay, he knows that he potentially has to make a play, so it's, it was Bird Ring. So right when this bongo goes out, he's going to look to potentially go for an aggressive play, right? He looks to go for an aggressive play on the bird ring. He understands that 
if he commits to bird ring here. Shu is right here to peel. Oh, yes, sorry. Shu is right here to peel, and Skewed is right here to also peel potentially, right? He understands at the same time his team is already winning this frontline duel. He doesn't have to commit to make a play here because they already got what they needed to be successful. Kepster's dead, and again, they're out of mech here. So the, his team just has to win here. So he pulls back from his original plan, right? He forced that he forced Bird Ring to kind of give up this off angle on the left hand side. Now they're playing main. And look, they it reduced the space that Glad had. Glad had potentially one, two. I guess technically a third angle, but like they they have control meaning of two lanes here, right? This main lane and this left hand side. They reduce how much uh, lane control or side control or full map control Glads have to a singular lane after that. And the potential to make a hero play has now gone down a lot more because they're forcing them into the enemy team of shock, right? Again. Well done by Choi. Well done by Choi. I love watching Choi VODs all the time. Um, mainly just again because Choi is just so strong <laughs> on this character. It's just ridiculous. Uh, I don't know why this happens. I just want a black screen. Z's, dude. Just give me a black screen. Alright. Sweet. Okay. So looking at these main points. Again, we look at space management. A lot of the time, at the start of these fights, he's looking to enable his team. He's looking to protect them. He's looking to matrix them. He's looking to potentially duel some threats that might be there. As the mid-fight goes on, as the fight is continuing, he's consistently looking for aggressive actions, right? He's looking to zone. He's looking to duel, right? And by zoning, it means a zone into duel, right? AKA like a fight, trying to 1v1. The other thing that I didn't really bring up that could be really good in terms of an aggressive action, he's looking for boops all the time, right? Not defensive boops when they go for dives, but he's looking to boop people off high grounds. He's looking to boop people into his team, right? And then in terms of matrix usage, how is he utilizing his matrix? Does he have to use his matrix in a lot of situations? There was one instance where we saw that he didn't have to use his matrix on attack. But that was just because his back line did not rotate in time and he just utilized the matrix in a poor way. And they overlapped matrix and window, right? Then he didn't have matrix in key times when he needed it. But aside from that, his matrix usage was pretty good for enabling his team for rotations and taking space, but also enabling him to play a little bit more aggressive, hold space for a longer period of time, look to be a threat, right, on the side. And these bombs, they were very good. He did use one for his second life, and that was on the point of first when they were defending, right, when he was trying to reduce the amount of ticks that they were getting. And then the other times was mainly to create chaos on these corners when Glass was trying to take corner control from shock or if not take corner control from shock it was when they were looking for an engagement as they're going for an engagement Choi is looking for a bomb that forces Glass to split in multiple directions something that's kind of key with bombs that i didn't really talk about but i'll kind of add as a side point here is the location of the bomb is very important you notice most of the times when Choi is bombing the location of where he bombs is right in the middle right in a key spot where most of the time the core is holding or the back line is holding. That makes it so that it's really, really hard to be able to go forward or backward. Like you have to really commit to one action. And even sometimes when you do, it's in such a great position that maybe you'll get a kill from it if they're too slow on reacting. So again, this is very, very good from Troy all across. The purpose of his bomb and then how he's getting the value with the bomb is mainly from the location as well of where he is having the bomb end, right? Again, this is a very small detail, but a very important point. Um, these two things of why he's using bomb or how he tries to get the value with the bomb, they are the key thing to start from getting bomb value. The location and how it ends is when you will be able to 100% get that value all the time from being able to, uh, you know, get the purpose to its full extent. And then the last thing I'll add here, because like I said, that I think it's really important and I, I should have brought this up but I didn't and that's kind of on me because I kind of forgot how important shift was um, I know micro missiles are a little bit more of a fine-tuned detail but shift is quite an important detail uh, I misunderestimated how important shift was and that's on me um, but shift usage is very important again you want to be proactive with it you see that he was consistently proactive with the shift always utilizing it 
uh, not spamming it per se, but always utilizing it potentially to move, potentially to pressure, right? But um, he's always using it for some sort of action. And then the other thing to kind of keep in mind with his shift usage, right? Uh, he always ends in a safe position, right? And aside from that, the other thing to keep in mind is he doesn't use the full duration. I know that seems like a really weird kind of point to bring up, but the amount of divas that I actually know that feel obligated to use the full shift duration is actually crazy. Um, I'll use this as an example. Uh, I remember talking to Finzi about his diva when uh, I was coaching him a little bit on raspberries. And I, I told this to IC too. I took the I told this to my off tank that was in AU contenders too. I was like, why do you always use your shift? Like, why do you never end your shift? And they kind of looked at me and they're like, well, I never really thought about that before. Like, is it really that important? I'm like, well, think about it like this. When you end your shift, right, You your shift goes back on cooldown again and you could potentially spam it again and then again. And that's why it's really important to be able to not always use the full duration of your shift unless you really, really need it, right? Because if you can't, right, I'll put fly here in brackets just in case people are kind of weirded out. But um. If you don't, then that means you're wasting this extra time, this two seconds or so, uh, to do something, right? And they're like, wow, I never really thought about it like that. That that makes actually a lot of sense. And they, I remember talking to them later when they applied it to their play, and they're like, I do see a lot of a big difference. Now I feel like I'm doing more. Like, I feel like I can, there's more time for me to do actions that I never felt I had the time to do again. And this is, again, where it's really important that your decision making, your space management, it all kind of comes down into one, right? Um, full duration. Boom. All right. That being said, that's Diva with Choi. 